I'm Johnny. And it's time for season 4.1. Okay, look, my video blog, my rules. So if I want to take like a week or two break, uh, deal with it. Sorry. Not sorry. But we're not quite at the end of season four, but we're not quite at the beginning of season five. So the next few episodes up until about late August might get spotty. In the meantime, we're in the middle of season four point something right now 4.1 part of that is that the end of my seasons i always take off all the buttons and i had to do that for my daughter because she wanted to cosplay as rat man from portal pretty badass so she lent me this button thanks okay but for today i want to talk a little bit about studio mixes because that's all i really do and before i really dig into what the hell a studio mix is first let me talk about what a dj mix is this is where a chick or dude gets up on stage and with records and turntables, usually nowadays it's CD DJs is up there and plays somebody else's music. Usually while beat matching, matching the BPM of one record to another. It's takes some practice, but these days so there's a sync button, but ultimately a DJ has got a lot of skills in track selection, crowd reading, audience participants, superstar feedback, um, bouncing up and down, him. waving hands in the air, and faux knob twiddling. Or get, get your, your degree. degree. Now, studio mixes are a stark contrast to that. And they start with perhaps a DJ taking a DJ mix and cleaning up any little errors, cutting out any rough spots. And from there, it kind of blossoms. Instead of mixing the tracks on the fly and live, what you can do is actually just kind of snap the tracks in place like Lego bricks. Changing the dimension of time into space. Now this allows you to really shape the energy of the mix, really paint with the ebb and the flow of the overall narrative and this allows you to bring the whole DAW tool set to bear on what you're building. Like you can add extra reverbs, you can munge everything with filters and delays and you name it. Like what I love to do is I like to take two tracks and I like to remix them so that their buildups and breakdowns are at the same spot and then overlay them on top of one another. I personally love the sound of a really long mix and I double love the sound of two tracks that sync perfectly together, not only in key and in harmony, but also in terms of their structure as well. And one of my favorite parts, and Tom Middleton sort of turned me on this on the sound of the cosmos, is where you have callbacks from, say, the beginning or the middle of a mix later on in the mix, where the mix references itself. Because if you know anything about me, you know I love self-reference. I'm Johnny. What I really like to do is stack up a whole bunch of pieces of the mix to present the whole picture of that mix. And inside of Inbolt and All Souls Day, links down to the doobly-doo, I do that. And one of the coolest things, at least for me, is callbacks to previous mixes. I do that a couple of times in Summer Souls Twist. And you can make a mix have a narrative purpose. And there's something really satisfying for me about that. Like a mix that tells a story. And I know, I know, that's like 1994 called and what's their hippie raver philosophy back. But it's true. There is something about a mix that tells a cohesive story that is interesting all right i've mentioned a few of my mixes i have more there's two acid techno mixes out there there's a nightcore mix out there i haven't yet made a vaporwave mix but you know that mf -er is coming hell i've even made two christmas mixes they're all available on my mix cloud go check it out and until next time if reality is a simulation we must wrest control of that simulation from its makers so that we can preserve our universe because it's fun